Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Post Post Podcast. With me, as always, is my co-host, Chris Ronan. How are we doing this week? Good, buddy. How are we doing? Good. You ready for a long weekend for yourself? I am, yep. Very excited. Very excited. You going to the Cape? Yeah, I'm going to spend the weekend in the Cape. Yeah. It's hang, awesome. out, hang out with my brother-in-law and their family. Lucky Be bastard. Nice. Yeah. Lucky bastard. I don't know. I got to work, so... So that's 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 my life right now. Just just work. Can't forget to mention this week's episode is episode 106, and we'd like to thank our presenting sponsor, Corona Premier, for sponsoring the podcast. So mm-hmm. thank you so shout much. Shout that one out. Shout out to Corona. Um, also, I uh, before I even get into anything, um, I kind of want to update on uh, last week. I was talking about Jake Vertanen, and uh, I was uh, almost immediately. It was like two days after we after we posted the um, the episode. Uh, he signed with the Fishtown Penguins of uh, Germ- of the German League, so uh, yeah, yeah, it's just it's whatever. Get get just get away with whatever the fuck you want now. Just someone will sign you. Some- That's yeah, it is wild to see that like he was called up by teammates of being like a cancer in the locker room, and a team like basically immediately picked him up. So kind of nuts to see. I, I didn't think that that was gonna happen personally. No, it was it was immediate. But I, I, I was telling you too when we were talking about it. I'm like his stats are pretty good, and I'm mm. sure the team just saw the stats. But like, yeah, fuck it, throw him in there. Yeah, episode. maybe maybe they just keep him on a short leash and tell him, hey, well, there's no messing around here. You know. Yep. This is your third try. We'll see. Know. We'll see. Uh, but let's get right into it. Uh, tonight we got signs and some injuries. Uh, so the we're gonna start off with the LA Kings here. Uh, big signing. They signed Mikey Anderson to an eight-year, $33 million contract, which is a 4.12 AAV. Uh, he has 13 points so far this season with a plus 12, plus minus. Anderson was drafted by the Kings in the fourth round in 2017, and this is his fourth season with the team with two goals and 11 assists so far this season. Uh, I think he's a first-line defenseman, so this dude is like going to be a king for a while, and I think this is a uh, solid signing for him. Yeah, top pair D, um, four mil is definitely great value long term too. I mean, plus ten on a team that you know historically over the past few years hasn't been too great yeah. offensively. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can really tell that you know he's not the guy putting the puck in the back of the net. He's breaking the puck out for the team, but his main role is to keep that puck out of the net, out of the offensive zone. Uh, sorry, the defensive zone, and snap it right up ice. So I-, I think it's a very good sign. The term's great, and he's on a line with Drew Doughty right now. I think and. For him to kind of pass the torch off to this guy and say, "Hey, this is going to be your role," like I think, I think it's really good for the team. LA is going to look pretty good. Yeah, I think they're looking too into the future too, because uh, there's a lot of guys in the LA Kings that are uh, reaching retirement age. Mm-hmm. I guess I want to say they're all old. So uh, a signing for a young stud like Mikey Anderson is a uh, uh, good look for the LA Kings for uh, the future of future of the organization yeah and shout out to the back office for understanding that and you know making the rebuild happen quicker than half the other teams in the league right (laughs) right uh and then we got one more signing here too the detroit red wings have signed defenseman oli mata to a two-year six million dollar contract which is three mil aav uh oli mata's kind of been bouncing around a bit i have his uh, hockey db here so last year uh, speaking about the Kings, he was with the Kings, but this year he's playing for Detroit. So far with five goals and 12 assists as a defenseman. Um, so I'll pick up for this team, uh, Detroit Red Wings. I think he's going to fit in well with this team for a team that's coming up, by the way. Uh, so I think it's a good two years. That's really like a good, like, I like how you said short leash there. Uh, maybe like a little short leash to see how he does and then go from there. But uh, this dude has been around for a while. He started with the Pittsburgh Penguins in 2013. Uh, what's he's born at, he's 28 years old, so I don't know. Does it hit like a certain age where just like like 20 years old? Are you sitting there thinking five years, or are you sitting there thinking like two years till he's 30, and then figure it out from there? Yeah, I think um, the team kind of looks at him as a third line guy, back end of his career, where it really shouldn't be. You know, like he had one year where he really popped off with the Pittsburgh Penguins, 13, uh, sorry, six goals, 13 assists, uh, a plus 22. Um, I'm sorry, plus 27 on the ice. Mm-hmm. These these stats are tough to read sometimes. Yeah. Um, and then another year where he was seven goals, 22 assists. Um, minus one on the season, but, you know, plus minus isn't always the, the best outlook on things. Yeah. Um, I think that he has had a good NHL career, but not anything that's going to be, you know, you know, Hall of Fame material right. or even right. Team Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I do think that the change of scenery from L.A. to Detroit has been good for his game. 
and seeing him on that bottom line is probably the best spot for him, especially where he's, his main role is probably to show the young guys, you know, how, how it works and how it goes, you know? Right. His stats are already better compared to the last two seasons that he had with the LA Kings, too. So mm-hmm. I think that says a lot as well. Change of scenery for sure. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so let's move on here to uh, I get, we got a list of injuries. I feel like we keep talking about injuries, but uh, a lot of these names are like big names. Uh, I guess if you're. Um, if you got sports betting or whatever the hell, this this will help you out a lot here. So uh, the Senators have Antoine Forsberg is out indefinitely due to torn right and left MCLs. Cam Talbot is still out for at least another week with a lower body injury. That means Kevin Mandelis and Mad Sogard uh, is the tandem for this team. Uh, Mandelis had 46 saves in his NHL debut versus the Islanders, which is second most in an NHL debut in NHL history. First was Toronto's goalie Ken Reggett, who had 48 against the Hartford Whalers. Um, so good luck, good luck out on uh, Kevin Mandelis here. So uh, especially for a team that's struggle city right now. But uh, yeah, hopefully Camp Tab- Camp Tabba can come back. And uh, unfortunate event for Antoine Forsberg here. So uh, yeah, for the team to have no goaltending and to see you know one of your guys go down with both MCLs, that sucks. That's going to be a long road to, to recovery. I feel like for him. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just so bad to see. But the Matt Sogard guy has like a pretty cool story. I, I don't know if you put notes in on it this week, um, but his story seems pretty cool, and it'll be interesting to watch him, you know, get get a chance to make a name for himself, and you know, maybe the Senators can sell high on him early if they think they're going to go with the other two guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, really like what am I trying to say? A slim, tall, slim goalie there too. Like Six foot big, seven, big, I think. Yeah, fucking big dude. So. Hopefully he can uh, really set set the tone here, set the pace with the uh, Ottawa Senators to really show what he's got uh, right now. I think as a goalie coming up in like this type of situation for a team that is not doing so well, this might be the uh, what do I say the best opportunity for you. Yeah, seven and three in their last ten, they're not doing that poorly. I mean they're they're just above five hundred, twenty six, twenty four, and three record. Where it's they, just where they're just they in s- a bad division. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's they're second to last with a winning record. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Everyone in this division in the Atlantic has a winning record except for the Canadians. 23, 28, and 4, which isn't even all that bad. Wow. Shit. Damn. It's, it's just because the top three teams have a combined 38 losses. You know, it's nuts. That's crazy. Holy shit. Yeah, difficult. To... Damn. So imagine if, like, the Bruins, Toronto weren't doing that fucking well. Like, they'd be, what, third, fourth? No. I'm, th- I'm overthinking this. I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Things would change a lot differently. Oh, yeah. You know? That sucks, huh? Uh, but let's move on here. We got, we got like, another handful of these as well. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, another goalie, another big hit for this team. Uh, Logan Thompson is week-to-week with a lower body injury, which means Aiden Hill and Lauren Persuas is their tandem right now. Uh, as of recording, tonight is their first game in four days since Logan Thompson went out versus the Sharks. Um, Vegas is holding on to first in the Pacific and ninth in the league. So uh, we went from a team that uh, I, I guess you you are right where they're doing well, but just like in the uh, standings, not doing too well. But mm-hmm. for the Vegas Golden Knights, a team that's doing well and they're doing well in the standings and losing both goalies uh, is going to be a little challenge right there for the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, so, so they're looking at Aiden Hill and Lauren Persuas as their tandem. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. Yep. Uh, but yeah, like you said, first in their divi- uh, their division and ninth in the league. Like that's another little sign of you know how how much better like one or two divisions are because if they're the best in their division but they're still ninth best in the league, that's crazy too, right? Right. Thirty two, eighteen, and four, 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 and two in their last ten on a three game win streak, but. You know, an extra four days off, you know, that's that's probably the best thing for this team right now. Oh, yeah. My futures bet doesn't seem like it's going to do too well. This is a team that I could see sliding down the standings a little bit here. Mm. Um, so I'm really just praying that they sneak in and, you know, get that fourth spot in the playoffs and, and you know, rest up and up. be ready yeah. for there. Mm-hmm. I want the Vegas to keep going, buddy. It's, I know you want them. I want them too. There we go. There we go. I'm with you on this. Uh, so, let's read about uh, the Canadians because we were just talking about them. Uh, big fighter Arbor uh, Jakai is out indefinitely with an upper body injury. Arbor has 10 fights this season with 101 pims. Jakai joins a laundry list of players out for the Canadians. Sean Monaghan, Uraz 
sorry, Jiraj Slavkovsky, Brendan Gallagher, Cole Caulfield, Jake Evans, and Kirby Dock. Uh, that is like pretty much the entire Montreal Canadiens team right there. If, uh, if we're just talking about the Montreal Canadiens being that fucking bad, I could, this is definitely the fucking reason why. Uh, but uh, unfortunate for the Canadians, uh, this dude is like the John Scott this year of uh, the NHL. This dude is just dropping gloves left and right. That that big dude, that uh, the the big enforcer that uh, the NHL really doesn't see anymore. And uh, it's unfortunate because I don't think I see. You kind of have to dig in and fi- like find all his fights. Because when I was like looking up uh, all of his fights this season, like. Uh, hockeyfights.com is an awesome website. You can just see all the fights there, and he does a great job. So it's like the, all of his 10 fights are there. It is awesome to see. Uh, but there's some, like, I remember I was talking about Sportsnet, and uh, there's there's some fights that they skip. I don't know if because of, like, some fights are just, like, kind of just uh, a little wrestling little match. A little wrestling match. But, uh, yeah, you don't you don't see it all sometimes. But, uh, yeah, unfortunate hit for the Montreal Canadiens. Just a, uh, a guy that, like, kind of ropes in uh Bums in seats, as you want to say, for the Montreal Canadiens. So, um, yeah, unfortunate for the Canadiens. And they need to fucking – I'm looking at – I was looking at that list of players that they're out, and I'm like, dude, this is like – is this like the second year, third year in a row that just like they cannot have a healthy fucking bench? Like, what's yeah. going on? It's, yeah. It's, 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 it's fucked for the Montreal Canadiens. For sure. It's bad. Definitely. And then uh, the last bit of news, I feel like it's been all goalies. <clears throat> the Colorado Avalanche, Pavel Francouz, will miss multiple weeks with a lower body injury, uh, which means Jonas Johansson will back up Georgiev. Uh, Francouz, so far this season, has a 7-7-1 record, 2.53 GA, and a .919 save percentage. Uh, good stats for him, unfortunate um, unfortunate for Francouz, but... Uh, I don't know. I feel like Yoga is going to get the job done. I think he's a solid goaltender anyway. I think uh, all it is is you need to just back up at that point for Yogi. Yeah, like, I just think like this team for what they were expected to have this season is kind of middling. Like they're they're not performing up to the standards that they should have been uh, coming off of a Stanley Cup. Twenty nine, nineteen, and five, six, two, and two in their last ten. Missing Kale McCarr right now as well. I think he's day to day. But yeah, the team is just. They're getting the job done. Like they're third in the division. They're they're going to be in the playoffs. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, you know, not that same firepower that we saw last season for no. some reason. No, I, you could say that about about like a bunch of teams. I, I've been saying that about uh, the Calgary Flames, Edmonton Oilers, the Florida Panthers, Tampa mm-hmm. Lightning. I'm like, where the fuck are these teams are? But I don't know. Just Florida Panthers won tonight, so that that's good for them. But. Yep. I don't know, Tam- and then we kind of agree that Tampa is just like that team that's just going to kind of relax a bit until playoffs and then really kick up the pace. I don't know about that, dude. I think they're a lot better than you think, 35-16-3 and three on the season. I think that team is definitely something to not – I don't think they're getting the spotlight as much as they were a few seasons ago, yeah. so it's not as highlighted as much, mm-hmm. and it's just Tampa's going to Tampa, but I think that team is always just a force to be reckoned with. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're set, too. It's unbelievable how, that, how set that team is, but – I don't know. I guess Edmonton Oilers and Calgary Flames too. So yeah, and I think Calgary and uh, Florida end up kind of being a wash because of the Matthew Kachuk trade, and it seems like it just hasn't worked out for both of those teams this season. Um, just you know, new face in the locker room, getting familiarized and everything. But you know, maybe next year they'll be able to build on it and get get the tires kicking again. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, maybe this is like a uh, kickstarter season, just like uh, the whole Sergey Bobrovsky in Florida thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's that's really it. I, I was shocked how many injuries. Um, I mean, I just kept getting, like, injury reports, injury reports, and it wasn't just, like, no names. It was, like, big names. And, again, like, a lot of, like, goaltenders in there, too. So I was like, oh, boy, not looking good. So those could, like, turn the tides for, like, some of these teams until they come back, you know. Uh, but let's let's move into some stuff here. So a lot of, like, NHL history, NHL records being fucking broken here this week. Uh, the Boston Bruins, after Tuesday's 3-2 to two overtime uh, win over Dallas, they tied the NHL record for the fewest games needed, which is 53, to reach 40 victories in a season, matching the 2015-2016 Washington Capitals. Bruins are currently, I, I put 48-5, and five, but they just won tonight. They literally just won, so 41-8-5. And, and the Capitals would finish the 2015-2016 uh, first in the league with a 56-6-8 and eight record. God damn yeah i have a 56 and 18 56 18 and 8 record that season 
for the Washington Capitals, um, just because that added up to like 70, 80, like 70 games or some shit like that. So, oh, I didn't even look. Yeah. I- 56, 18, and 8 or some shit like that, however the math with works out. Mm. Still impressive. But, NHL fucked up. Um, I just I just don't like that, uh, you know, th- this is the second time we brought this stat up for the Bruins, and mm. neither time they they won the record. They're just tied yeah, they're just with tying it. You know, I'm like, shit, fuck, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's just like, oh, I hate yeah. reporting on that. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're doing great, but they didn't break the record. So. Right. Um. No, it's funny. Uh, Bruins and NHL did this on the Instagrams. Uh, they did it with like the photo that they have. He goes, Bruins, uh, forty season NHL uh, record. I think that's what they put on the thing. And you're like, oh, that's crazy. And then like you actually look it up. You're like, no, no, no they tied it. Like, why can't you put fucking tied to the record? I don't know. Well, now they they do hold the record. It's just they hold it with someone they else hold as well. It. That's what you I'm know? saying. Yeah, yeah. but they, yeah. It was just weird that it didn't, because when you read it, it's like, oh, shit, they now have the record, but not tied. I don't know. That was just my thing. And then when I looked it up, I was like, oh, okay. Mm. Uh, but let's get into uh, the Rangers. Yeah, so the Rangers are Temi Panarin. This is an, a weird one, because I thought this, especially like the 70s, 60s era, like old-time hockey, I thought this would happen more often. Uh, the Rangers, uh, Temi Panarin and LA's Adrian Kempe both had four gold nights in the same night, which was the first time in NHL history that happened. Panarin had four goals and one assist for five points in a 6-2 Rangers win over the Hurricanes. And Kempe had f- four goals and a 6 to nothing Kings win over the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, I always find these, like, interesting because, you know, I like I, exactly what I just said. Like, back in the day, like, Goaltending was, like, different and just, like, I feel like the scores are just high as shit. So, like, why couldn't, like... Yeah, especially when you have Gretzky and Lemieux playing around the same time together. Like, yeah, you know, around right. the same time. And same thing with Yarmir Yager getting in the mix. Guys mm-hmm. like that. Um, even, like, Pavel Bure, you know, you name it. You name I it. would even go to maybe Ovi and Sid could have maybe done that one time. But yeah, that's nuts, right? That's crazy to think, yeah. No, what's crazy too, actually, the line combinations for LA. I was looking at Adrian Kempe mm-hmm. and um, the LA Kings. He's on that first line with Kopitar and Byfield, but the third line of Kevin Fiala, Blake Lazat, and Alex I followed it. Kevin Fiala is having like a career year, like blowing things out of the water. I didn't realize that he was that far down the lineup, dude. Yeah. It's it's impressive to see. So they basically have some awesome depth. I didn't think I follow would be down on that third line either. So wow. I think the the Kings are looking pretty good. They're yeah. like a sneaky playoff team, I think. I I I think I've said this a while ago. I know I know you've said it, but I really do like the Kings. I I I I love like the underdog stories. Like uh we're talking about the Detroit Red Wings and uh who's the other team? Oh, the Buffalo Sabres. And I just love seeing like the comeback teams and the Kings are Especially like last year. Last year they did pretty fucking well. Last year. I don't know if you can get the uh, stats on that or, or if I have it, but I think uh, compared to the 2020 season, I believe, like they kind of shot up like midway through, and I guess they kept the same pace uh, this year as well. Like they're still looking good for a uh, the LA Kings compared to what they have been for the past. What did you say? Like six years or something like that? Seven years? They haven't been that fucking good. Like I feel like when you think LA, you think. I'd think, probably say three. Like the past, I was thinking like three years. Twenty uh, last year, forty four and twenty seven. Yeah. Twenty one and twenty eight the year before. Twenty nine and thirty five. Thirty one and forty two. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Because anytime I think like the uh, L A Kings, it's always just like it's the L A teams that always like kind of mix and match. Like they're they're on the bottom of uh, the West. Like they're like the three worst teams in the West. Usually it's like it, Anah- one, Anaheim. one season. It was all three California teams. Too. Yeah. It's, it's fucking crazy to think, but uh, I just, hopefully they're on the rise again. I, I do love that team. I just, it's uh pu- trying to put like the pieces together, like the right pieces together. Like you have the guys, it's just figuring shit out. And I just I can't see them making a deep run though. Is the only thing like, no, it's just, it's no. the ship's not built to, to last that long, no, you know? No. And you need like how old is Jonathan Quick now? Like I, yeah. I, I know he's old, but I battle and injury all the time right. too. Mm-hmm, exactly. So uh I don't know. They Tell you to... what though, if if Bo Horvat going over to the Islanders um is is enough to get them into the playoff race and the same thing with the Buffalo Sabres, if they can somehow sneak in with Tage Thompson, those are some awesome storylines to see for a seven and eight seed. You oh know? my god, yeah. Yep. Absolute comeback. Um. Oh fuck! What, what were we talking about? What, what were we talking? Who's the players that we're talking about? Like uh, 
redoing the uh, playoff seeds, like uh, the eight one versus seeds. sixteen instead. Is that yeah. what you? Yeah, yeah. I I think I'd rather see that. I was just, what's your opinion on like that? Like a one versus sixteen instead yeah, one versus for 16, playoffs. Sixteen, two versus yeah. Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, I just think it does make it more predictable in the grand scheme of things. Like the the best part about the NHL playoffs right now is like once you have a ticket, like an eight can upset a one pretty easily. Like once yeah. you're in, it's it's a whole new ball game. But like. Mm-hmm. I think if you really had like one through sixteen true, like that sixteen seed team is probably Fact. never gonna upset that one seed. Yeah. You know, never say never, but you're not gonna have those kind of matchups again. But it would be, it would be cool to see, like you know, I don't know, call it call it a Bruins and L.A. Kings first round playoff matchup, you know, right, or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know, just spitballing. It would be cool. I don't know. It'd just be different, something that we haven't seen in a while. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. And if it didn't work, I don't know, just switch it up next year. Yeah. Hmm, got me thinking now. Uh, but let's move on here to uh, Connor Ingram. So uh, if you guys follow my Instagram, I was all over him last night. Um, Connor Ingram breaks a record. This week, Ingram started a net for the Coyotes when they faced off against the Tampa Bay Lightning and stood on his goddamn head. He would get his first career shutout and break an NHL record with most saves in a first NHL shutout with 47. Ironically, his goalie partner, Vegmelka holds second most with 46 saves back in November of 2021. Uh, I'm going to keep going here. So speaking of Coyotes, after that win against Tampa, that gave the Coyotes a seven-game win streak, and Coyotes reporter Craig Morgan asked Clayton Keller about it. And his response, we got a good burst of energy there over the break. Keller then laughed and said, I'm sure the GM is not too happy about it, kissing the suck, suck hard for Badad goodbye. Also, uh... Last little bit of uh, Coyotes news. Coyotes defenseman Jacob Chitrin has been a healthy scratch uh, due to trade reasons for a few games now. Not just one. It's been a few. So uh, it hasn't happened as of recording. It's been going on all week. And uh, so expect something. Maybe by the time this uh, this, uh, this episode drops Monday, we might have something over the weekend. But uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, that dude, Connor Ingram, was fucking unbelievable. So... Uh, versus the Tampa Bay Lightning, it went into a shootout. Both uh, uh, Brian Elliott and Tim had a had a uh, shutout, but um, it was just like I've I've never seen a goalie like it was like standing on his head, but it, just like the confidence of like him just in general it was like incredible. Like he was like all alone, like two on ones, and like he made it look so fucking easy. It was just it was really cool to see, like absolute like stud. Yeah, even watching him play, like um back when I like he was first making his come up I always liked the, the play style that he had and everything mm-hmm. um and it is like you said nuts that they're both you know him and Veg Melka are both one and two for that record for their first career shutouts yeah nuts um I just uh I went on to um trying to say what the what the hell's his name here um the the Coyotes reporter oh Craig Morgan I was on his Twitter today and uh, I took a photo of uh was it Stelter and uh, and him? And uh, he asked he asked Ingram like, uh, "All right, what's the routine today?" He goes, "Nothing." Like they they had me in a nice bath all day today after last night. I was like, "That's fucking cool." Yeah, um, just want to follow up too on the Chitrin news. So just to give a little bit of insight on it, we don't really have anything yet. Like Matt said, yeah. um, there was rumors of him heading over to the Kings with uh, prospect Brant Clark. Uh, sorry, Brant Clark as part of the return going to the Coyotes. Uh, the Then Friedman reported that they weren't parting with Clark or the young center, Quinton Byfield, so his name was in the mix too. Um, they said that TSN's Chris Johnston said the Kings remain the front runners. It appears they're no closer to moving Chitrin at the moment. Friedman believes talks between the two clubs hit a snag over a contract regarding a secondary player in the trade. So uh. that's held it up. Does suck to see him getting healthy scratch for three games. Yep. And then lastly, the Ottawa Suns' Bra- uh, Bruce Garriott, I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry, mm. Uh, reported the Oilers and Leafs were among the clubs have stepped up efforts to land Chitron. Um, Columbus Blue Jackets, Senators, St. Louis Blues have also been linked to him. Wow. And, oh, uh, a source told Boston Hockey Now's Jimmy Murphy that the Bruins were also among the suitors. Um, and I just, I think the only one that they're kind of saying they're out on now is the Oilers, just because I think the asking price was a little too high. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with the Senators I'm seeing now, too. The Panthers and Islanders have been ruled out. This article is really fucking good, actually. This is Star <laughs> Telegram, Fort Worth. Yeah. So it's a Texas-based, um, oh, wow. kind of like the Boston Globe, yeah. and they just really went in on 
fucking everything they could find. So that was really cool to see. So uh, that was a lot to throw out the listeners, but there's a lot of teams (laughs) in the mix and a lot of teams not in the mix. So (laughs) glad I cleared that one up for everyone. Uh, Chichen doing real well, dude. He's been with the Arizona Coyotes since 2016. It's 2016. I got his uh, hockey DB up now. There's not a lot of defensemen out on that market, too. That's why we're seeing trades start to go now rather than closer to the deadline. Right, you know, yeah. People are trying to get gobble up whatever they can now and just be set. Yeah. Uh, so first round, 16th overall in the 2016 NHL draft of the Coyotes. Uh, doing really well. Past two seasons, uh, seven goals. Last, last season, seven goals, 14 assists. And then this season, so far, seven goals, 21 assists with a plus eight. Really fucking good. Been a solid dude. What, what, what am I looking at? Oh, the 2020 2021 season. In 56 games, he's had 18, as a defenseman, by the way, 18 goals and 23 assists. That's, that's fucking crazy. I wonder why everyone's after him. Solid player. I mean, when, you look, when you're looking at the uh, Arizona Coyotes, too, they, uh, it's uh, he's solid trade bait for something. And he's, they're going to fucking cast that fishing line as far as they can go, you know? Yeah, exactly. They got to get in. Basically anything that they can, yep, exactly. as much as they can for that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, okay, so we're done with the uh, Coyotes. I got, I think, one more left. Oh, two more left. I want to talk about. Oh, one more left. I want to talk about, and it's it's brutal. It's Vancouver Canucks yet again. Uh, so Spencer Martin is the second goalie in over ten years to go on a ten plus losing streak, right next to Michael Neuvirth. Uh, Spencer Martin has been sent down Abbotsford this week and currently has a one and one record there. There you go. He's got a win. <laughs> There's a win. Uh, with Thatcher Demko, also Oh Colin Delia and Artis Solovs are, are the tandem. Uh, Delia with a seven four and one record, a three point four eight GAA, uh, not good, and a point eight seven eight save percentage, also not good. Uh, but let me let's go from there and jump right into this uh, Artis Solovs guy. Uh, he made his NHL debut this week versus the Rangers, but with an unfortunate 6-4 to loss. Solos was drafted to the Canucks in 2019, and this year has played 35 games with the Abbotsford Canucks with a 21-9-4 record, 2.48 GAA, and a .906 save percentage. The reason why I bring him up, Ingo, Mag- Ingo Magazine this week uh, brought him up with, with an interesting story. Uh, coming from Latvia's under-18 in 2019, they apparently showed up to training camp in Vancouver with gear, which they said so worn down that compared to the, the also Latvian Artis Urbe's old pads, and he had to borrow a set of CCM gear from them just to make it through training camp. Uh, he would also hold on to that gear to help him start his OHL season with the Barry Colts. Uh, kind of crazy. Like, you see, like, it's like uh, when we had the uh, talk with Pat Norton, just like the, like, we're kind of spoiled or just like, uh, what am I trying to say here? Like, we're we're good here with, like, uh, all, like, our hockey gear. Like, we could just go to fucking Goalie Monkey, same with, like, Canada. But coming from, like, under 18, like, Latvia and stuff, like, coming coming by gear is... Uh, yeah, the, the programs aren't as developed there. out there. And if you're not playing on, like, the top teams, I guess, it's hard to get good gear. A lot of it does get passed down as you, like, grow into things. So, mm-hmm. you know, he probably, like you said, it was so worn down. I bet it wasn't him. He wasn't the only goalie to be wearing those pads before, no, you know, know, he's playing. Um, but yeah, it's very cool to see him get a start. Sucks that he ended up getting a loss, loss. but um, yeah, the Vancouver Canucks goaltending, you, you always have to build the team from the back out, and there just doesn't be seem to be a solution right now. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so not looking too good there. No. Uh, yeah, it was it was uh, it was actually kind of a cool to see like uh, this dude just like worn down pads, but didn't really matter because like his whole his whole thing was set on just stopping the puck and being as good of a player as he can be. Uh, where he's from in Latvia, but here I feel like it's different. Like I got a few puck marks on my Vons, and I'm already looking at the VE tens trying to fucking customize them for next season. You know? Yeah, that's that's <laughs> fucking wild. No, <laughs> shouldn't be like that. Shouldn't be like that at all. <laughs> but here I am. Uh, all right. So some hockey news here uh, throughout the week. Uh, oh, did you see this? Uh, Detroit Red Wings fan George gets none of his life at a game as fans boo all the Canucks fans on the Jumbotron and then cheer for him every time he's on the Jumbotron. Do you remember that? Yeah, so funny, oh, dude. The God. kid wasn't even, like, smiling or anything. He's just staring at the camera. <laughs> so funny. Just a blank face. And he's the, like, they're like, yeah, going nuts for him. The clip, well, when you see the clip originally, if anyone saw it, 
I always thought of that kid from like back in the day. He was at the baseball game and he's like having the staring contest with the guy with the uh, oh yeah yeah camera. Yep. That's what I thought he was doing. And then like after like the second time of showing like Canucks fan and they're all booing him, I was like, oh this is fucking cool. <laughs> this dude's just like living his dream right now. But uh, it's just uh, again what I've been saying for the past couple uh, couple episodes here. It's uh, it's cool that these arenas and everything have like stuff for, like all the fans to do to get fans into the seats and like really have yeah. like interactive stuff so it was it, that was actually really cool to see um another weird thing to see here was Sidney crosby uh first 10 minutes and a game misconduct in his career which kind of blew my mind versus la after altercation with mikey anderson after he cross-checked him did you see that at all yeah i, I kind of like saw a, a small highlight of it but like it didn't really show the incident so I guess Mikey Anderson cross-checked him. Crosby didn't like it. They were mouthing off to each other. Mm-hmm. So the ref just teed them both up and gave him 10 each. And as he was going over to the box, like, he was just in the ref's ear giving him shit the entire way. So the ref just yeah. said, fuck it. Like, fuck have it. a game misconduct. See you yeah. later. It's kind of weird for Crosby to have that. I, I get, like, he was, like, um, the crybaby, I guess. He was a bit, remember, he was, when he yeah, was first when he in first the league? Yeah, came out, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, not, like, game misconduct type of shit. So... I was actually kind of shocked, like, out of, like, all the years he's played in the NHL, like, this is his first. But. Yeah, this is surprising, but it is hard to get a game misconduct if you're not the one dropping the gloves, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but going back to the crybaby thing, like, I think the main reason for it was, obviously, back then, you could do a lot more physically to a guy when they're trying to blow by you. Um, they've changed the rules of the game quite a bit to limit that. Mm. But, it, and even still, I feel like, you know, the guys that can't keep up with the McDavid's, the Crosby's that are blown by him, They'll do extra shit that would be called nine times out of ten on other guys. Yeah. But since it's them, like, it kind of evens the playing field a little bit when the refs, like, let some stuff go, you know. Right, and exactly. I think that was the main issue that Crosby was having tonight was, like, fuck this guy. Why am I getting teed up for what he just did? You right, know what I mean? Right, exactly. Which, solid point, Yeah. to, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with the game misconduct, dude. You can't be mouthing off to the ref. No, I mean, not at all. As the captain, I understand you wanted to speak to him, but, like, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure there was something more than just, like, hey – what the hell? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'm sure there's some trash talk going yeah. on and stuff. Uh, going back to me wanting uh, me wanting to pay premium to hear uh, mic'd up shit. Uh, like just imagine, uh, just like that would get that would get people to pay for like premium shit. Like they're putting a ton of it out now, which is cool. The mic'd up stuff. Yeah, there yeah. was uh, stuff that was released from the All Star game, like behind the scenes and stuff too. It's cool. Oh, oh. Yeah, something like that's cool. Like uh, one thing that really, one thing I loved, and we talked about this during the COVID season, was the no fans there, and like you could just hear the screams. Mm. <laughs> just yeah, yeah. Players telling each other to fuck off. Yeah, and all yeah. Stuff so so fucking good. Uh, but let's uh let's get kid friendly here. So to speak about the Rangers that we just talked about. The Rangers and Capitals will play on March 14th. It will be shown on the Disney Channel, Disney Plus, and Disney XD. Uh, yeah. Disney and ESPN won a new NHL, sorry, won a new NHL rights package in 2021, nabbing hours of the sport, uh, that were previously shown by NBC. To win the deal, ESPN executives told the league that this was not an ESPN deal, but a Walt Disney deal. We really want to inject the NHL into the overall Disney family, and this is going to be, uh, one of the games that they're going to show. I don't. I don't think they have legit any more. I think this is like the one. But the, I mean, it, that's getting down to the wire. End of the season's probably like what late, late April, late early April, May, right? Something like that. Yeah. So I don't know. This might be like the one game that Disney has. I think this might be a push to like try for it because everything else has been on like Hulu, right? Hulu Plus, ESPN. Yeah, but this is different where they're like you said, gearing towards the kids, and and that's how you grow the game and get yeah. A, a, permanent fan for life with a new audience right they're basically just mimicking what the nfl did this season and last season with the slime time collaboration they did with nickelodeon oh yeah they even had playoff games on nickelodeon this year where um you know i think that you could on- only watch it there maybe there was another broadcast that you could get it on a different channel obviously a much bigger entity in the nfl versus the nhl but um to see something like that like maybe they will have a a playoff game on dis on the regular disney channel you know for mm-hmm. you know cable people and disney plus people to watch so yeah interesting huh yeah all for it i'm actually really all for it um i thought 
So it's just funny that the Rangers and Capitals are going to show because I thought they would they'd be like the Anaheim Ducks. Because I didn't think any time I think Disney, I think the Mighty Ducks, Anaheim Ducks. Because doesn't Disney still own the Anaheim Ducks? Am I wrong? Couldn't tell you that. I thought uh, I thought they originally like owned the franchise. That's why I thought they'd be on it. But uh, it'll be cool. R- rope the kids into it, and uh, I guess try to get people back on. Uh, rope people back on like Disney Plus if you don't have it either. So yeah, I don't think it's going to be getting new subscriptions, but it's definitely an option to chuck on. So you know, maybe you have like a young a young kid that's getting into the game a little bit, and now you can convince them to watch the game because it's got some of their favorite characters on it as well. You know, right? Exactly. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about subscriptions here and uh, sports networks and stuff here. So uh, we talked about Bali Sports a few weeks ago, and uh, they're back in the news. Uh, Sinclair Broadcast Group, who operates Bali Sports Network, has missed a hundred and forty million dollar debt payment this week. The NHL held a board of governors meeting, and we haven't. I haven't. I was trying to look uh, for any information on that because this happened a few days ago, two days ago, I think, and there's no information on it whatsoever. So I think it's they're still trying to figure shit out. Uh, Diamond Sports Group, which owns and operates 19 regional sports networks, and that televises about a third of all MLB, NBA, and NHL games. Said on Wednesday that it will not make a one sorry will not make a 140 million dollar interest payment on its nearly nine billion dollar debt, setting the stage for a possible bankruptcy filing next month. The missed payment triggered a 30 day grace period, and Diamond Sports said on Wednesday that it intended to keep talking with the leagues and its creditors to come up with more favorable arrangements to televise games during that time. Diamond Sports has been in financial trouble from nearly the moment it was conceived. In 2017, the Walt Disney Company, which controls ESPN, reached an agreement to buy most of 21st Century Fox's assets. They included its portfolio of regional sports networks, which operated under the Fox Sports banner. But to secure regulatory approval of the deal, Disney agreed to sell the regional sports network to keep the core of Fox's wide range of all media, including hits... Uh, sorry, including hit television shows and movies. Most of the regional sports networks were bought in 2019 by Sinclair Broadcast Group, uh, the largest operator of local television stations in the country, in a deal with $10.6 billion. Sinclair created a wholly owned subsidiary Diamond Sports Group to operate the networks, and it loaded it up with $8 billion in debt to finance the purchase. So, like, they're already fucked to begin with, and, like, here we are. So this this kind of like that's even like more deeper of a hole than what we talked about Bali Sports like the other week because we were talking about Bali Sports like kind of going under and why there's like so many blackouts with all like these. Um, who's who's the Bali Sports we were talking about? So, uh, it's the one in the West where just like Arizona where they can't watch the games. Colorado, was Colorado, they can't watch the games and like this really just adds to the shit. We're just like, oh dude, like fuck, like I didn't realize like they were that bad and like in debt. Nine billion dollars in debt for these guys. That's yeah. I think that was that was, I think that was covered when we talked about it too. And this this date for that one hundred forty million dollar payment was the real, you know, are they going to pay it or are they going to skip it? Kind of tipping point that we were waiting on. So, Mm. uh, yeah, sucks to suck. The uh, the pull in the Arizona Coyotes. Yeah. Oh fuck, dude. Like that. That's that. Just that just hurts. And uh, I thought, <clears throat> so I originally thought it was just NHL, but I didn't realize they also had, like, NBA and MLB, too. So that's a uh, that's a fucking massive hit for these guys. So um, this is more of a uh, continuation of our Bali Sports, uh, I guess, talk that we had. So yeah, I, I I'm guess, sure we'll have something for you guys next week or yeah. in the future. Yep, I'm sure. I'm sure by next week or the week after we'll, we'll figure something out here. But uh, let's get into some positive news here. Uh, the Anthony Duclair Foundation, a nonprofit by the Florida Panthers and Anthony Duclair to promote diversity and inclusivity in hockey, has raised two hundred thousand dollars to assist blacks. Uh, so to assist black and youth hockey players in hockey, uh, that's fucking cool as shit. Um, I didn't realize this was a thing, so uh, I thought I'd th- definitely throw this out there. So the Anthony Duclair Foundation, I think, I think that's literally like the website. You can just Google it, and you can, uh, if you want to, you can. Uh, you can support them on their website. Uh, a random thing I just added here, too. It's not really hockey-related, but Michael Jordan this week on his 60th birthday celebrated um, celebrated it by making a $10 million donation to Make-A-Wish, 
which was the largest individual donation in uh, in that organization's history. So uh, for two for two great, you know, oh man, I was gonna compare Michael Jordan to Anthony DeClair. I don't know. No, you were going to compare Anthony DeClaire to Michael Jordan. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going to stop myself. Um, yeah, but just uh, two just incredible athletes. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's perfect. Uh, to raise like money to you know help uh, help people in need is just fucking cool news to hear throughout this week. So uh, some some light in the darkness because I feel like past few weeks uh, it's been a lot of like negative news going around so this is really cool yeah i don't know how much um other news that i might be forgetting but it seems like anthony duclair could be the one to win that um is it the bill masterton award i forget the one for oh, yeah. charitable work off the ice so yeah. this is definitely big for the community and i think anthony duclair is a, like a fan favorite down in florida too he's kind of a wrecking ball for that team but yeah. still puts a puck in the back of the net i feel like every year he's got some insane highlight reel goal that he gets you know oh, yeah. top 50 now that season. now that PK Subban's out of the picture, someone someone else has a chance, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was cool, and uh, so two more b- bits of news here before uh, we finish it up here. So, uh, <laughs> almost better than the teddy bear toss, the Marine Mariners of the ECHL are inviting fans to throw underwear and bras on the ice after the team's first goal that game. The game is Sunday, February nineteenth at three p.m. versus Atlanta. Also, get your mind out of the gutter. They don't want your wear. They don't want what you're wearing. They want packaged underwear and sports bra in honor of Women in Sports Night. All proceeds will be donated to the Preble Street and the Sports Bra Project. The Sports Bra Project uh, helps provide for women and girls who can't get access to such equipment. But my mind was in the gutter when we first found this because they literally the title is like. After the goal, throw your underwear and bras on the ice. I'm like, what? The how fuck many dudes do you think this? are going to be throwing their underwear on the ice? I like, ho- just, I as a, just as a joke. I hope a lot. Just, I, I really hope Jack. There's just like, <laughs> that's so gross, dude. Guy underwear just on the ice. <laughs> that's so gross. Though. Like, this is because you didn't explain what the fuck. You know, like, they don't explain it. They're just like, throw, throw your underwear. Yeah, and bras I mean, on it's good ice. publicity, though. You know, yeah. you just get it out there. It's, it's catchy and. People see it, they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. It's a, it's, it's a unique way to, you know, help an organization that probably doesn't get a lot of attention or spotlight, you know, and yeah. that's mm. that means a lot to these uh, women and girls that, yeah. you know, can't get that kind of stuff. It's so. going to be like a rock concert there that night. First, first goal to the goal is going to be like, there's going to be a fish. Yeah. like, it's not what we want. Not, yeah, put that not, on your resume. That's <laughs> not what we're looking That'll for. get you up to the NHL. <laughs> little panty dropper goal score in action drop. down for the main Mariners. We've kind of seen it at the NHL. Who's that? Was it when Ovechkin, when the Capitals won the Stanley Cup, I think? Yeah, it was the Vegas. woman against the. Uh, yeah. And then there was another one where the girl was next to uh, the um, uh, the penalty box and was doing it to the players. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. See some crazy shit in the NHL. Might be might be seeing some stuff here, too, if they don't really explain what the hell's going on. Did you see the streaker at the Waste Management Open, dude? No. You didn't see him, dude? No. It was hilarious. He ran onto hole 16 and was, like, doing, like, stripper moves, like, on the flagpole. And then, like, just running around, like, getting the crowd going, riled up. And then, like, hit some old dude with, like, a juke when he tried to grab him <laughs> by, like, the bunker. And then beelined off of the 16. He went over to, like, the next hole and did, like, the same shit. And then he got into the water and swam out to, like, you know how, like, on the water they have, like, the logo just floating there? Oh. He was standing on the waste <laughs> management logo. And I think he had like Sharpie on his back that said like nineteenth hole. Dude, and it was like pointed what? to his to his bat to his his ass. <laughs> this was wild. I can't believe you didn't see this. this. Guy was a fucking menace. Holy shit. He's banned for life, obviously, but like <laughs> that was fucking wild. Oh, that place is a gong show though, the wasted management open oh, out in Arizona. God. How drunk or drugs? Oh both. Like what what do you need to be on in order to I forget what uh the what the other one was. It, I think it was an NFL game. You can put a prop bet on if there will or will not be a streaker, and a no guy shit. a guy put the bet in that there would, and then did it, and then tried to cash in, but he also got arrested. <laughs> tried to cash in, and they said no. You basically controlled the outcome of the bet, right, so your bet's void. You know that's fucking fucking crazy. hilarious. You can bet on anything, I guess. Someone uh I I you sent me or something. Well, I've been seeing it a lot lately, especially after the Super Bowl. Uh, people record themselves just, like, with bets. Uh, someone recorded saying, like, uh, someone betted that the 
national anthem won't last over a minute and 35 seconds mm-hmm. so they're just sitting there just like i'm like yeah Christ. prop bets yeah prop bets are wild bets on um the the gatorade color what what's it gonna be yeah or oh head, yeah heads yeah. or tails too yeah. oh god did you see were you the one that sent me that video Which there's one? a bunch of guys that uh that betted on the it was like I think it was like a shit ton of money too on like what what color the Gatorade's gonna be oh, for that's the coach, funny. and like I think right before they even did it, it just cuts to like the field and just like yeah, we don't know what it yeah, was. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was watching the game too because me and my buddies were talking about that. Like, what color is it gonna be? You know, <laughs> and, and I was like, sure. dude, come on. <laughs> All right, so uh, just just to finish up, if uh, another little donation, if anyone wants to help um, the sports bra project, if anyone wanted to do. Um, again, I, I don't know the website. If you just want to Google uh, Sports Bra Project, uh, the website's there, and you can donate to uh, help uh, women and girls in need who don't have such equipment. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So moving on here uh, for the last and final. This, oh, no, this is the second to last one. Our boy, buddy. Our boy. Uh, Boston and the NHL PA, former mayor of Boston, Marty Walsh, has been named the new NHLPA executive director, replacing Don Fair. Uh, Walsh was the mayor of Boston from 2014 to 2021 and has been U.S. Secretary of Labor under Biden since March 23rd of 2021. The NHLPA had been looking for a new executive director to take over for Fair since April. Uh, A search committee was formed to find his successor. The NHLPA's search committee consists of seven NHLPA members, Ian Cole from the Lightning, Justin Falk from the Blues, Sam Gagne from the Jets, Zach Hyman from the Oilers, Kyle Ocposo from the Sabres, Nate Schmidt from the Jets, and Kevin Shattenkirk from the Ducks. I thought that was cool that they had a bunch of players that were, like, in on it to, like, find uh, the new one. Uh, Zach Hyman, one of ten players on the search committee, said the person chosen to lead the union would be in charge of a pretty big role in shaping the future of hockey for us. Uh, the process was good, Hyman said. It was a lot of interviews and a lot of meeting with different candidates and a lot of conversations with the group. It was a great process to get to meet all the great people and figure out who was going to be the best fit for us. That process landed on Walsh, who emerged a top candidate from a group that included former Vancouver Canucks GM Mike Gillies and longtime NHLPA special assistant to the executive director Matthew Schneider. Uh, so this is really fucking cool. Like, um, again, like I, I didn't realize I was, I was, I was reading something on this and then it said, um, uh, one of the search committees, um, Zach Hyman. And I'm like, wait, what? This play is on this. <laughs> yeah, I w- it's the NHL players association. I know, Matt. but I didn't think like, I thought it'd be like, uh, retired like players. No, no, like- they're active. I mean, you got to give a shit about the league that you're playing in, you know? Yeah, you get a good point. Um, but this is kind of nuts to me from the jump because it was crazy to see him leave Biden's um, cabinet as U.S. Secretary of Labor. Like, that kind of seems like a cake job, like peak of your career. Like, it doesn't get much better than that. Yep. But then to come over and do this, it kind of started to make more sense to me. He's going to be making $3 million a year to do this, and he's making two hundred fifty k as the Secretary of Labor. So mm. a massive pay increase for him. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's always been close with union guys, I think, basically – um, working with Boston police oh, yeah. back in the day, got yeah. his campaign going mm-hmm. to become mayor of the city. Um, and yeah, he just has great, uh, representation and knowledge of unions, yep. um, stealing something from chicklets. He is, I believe the first, um, what's the position? Sorry. Um, executive mayor? director of the okay. NHL PA, uh, that does not have a law degree. So I thought that was interesting. Oh, wow. Interesting. They're going to need contract negotiations, arbitration in 2026, um, and he's going to obviously, you know, put together the pieces that he needs to get a good team underneath him to mm-hmm. get that all done. But I can't imagine a guy at his age is going to be going back to school to get a law degree, you know, like fucking oh. Billy Madison style. <laughs> um, but no. yeah, I just thought that was an interesting thing that they shouted out. This was, this kind of blew my mind when I saw it. I was like, wait, Marty Walsh is NHL. What, like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. there have been word of it for like three, four weeks now, but this is the first time that it actually has been confirmed, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it's just I thought it was like a crazy jump for him to go from, you know, Mayor Boston to the president's office basically to the NHL, NHL you know? <laughs> yeah, the NHL PA. <laughs> Nuts. That's a that's a crazy resume right there. Uh but yeah, good guy, local guy, literally. So uh hopefully he can uh 
help with the uh, yeah, they fucking they better avoid another fucking lockout. We can't have that. It's so bad for the game. <laughs> I'm with you on that. I don't know. Guess uh, my, we got faith in Marty. We got this. We got this, buddy. And for uh, the last bit of news here, it's actually sad. I thought we were going to be done with sad. But uh, for everyone who, at this point now, when the episode dropped, everyone knows at this point that Ovechkin's father passed away. Uh, Mikhail Ovechkin passed away Wednesday at the age of 71. Uh, kind of a bit of a backstory here with everything. Capital Center Nick Backstrom, who's actually really close with Ovechkin, uh, said Mikhail's Ovechkin's uh, personality was infectious. Uh, the one thing I always remember is he always he was always happy. Backstrom said he would always smile. We both didn't speak English in the beginning, but we could understand each other with our hands. As I said, he was part of the beginning when Alex got over here. He was always in the locker room. He was hanging out with the guys. He loved that. I think so. To get hit by this sad news is obviously really tough. I feel for the whole family. I can't imagine what they're going through. So. Uh, big words from just uh, like I get like Nick Bash from the whole Ovechkin thing, like another family right there, you know. Uh, Mikhail Ovechkin, who played soccer professionally before an injury cut short his career, had a big impact in Alex's professional Ovechkin's professional hockey career, along with Ovechkin's mother Tatanya, who was a two-time Olympic gold medalist for the Soviet Union in women's basketball in 1976 and 1980. Whoa. Earlier in Ovi's career, Mikhail often traveled from Russia to see his play, son play and shared some of his biggest moments with him. Even after his surgery for a heart condition in February 2014, Mikhail was with Ovi in Los Angeles when he, named, when he was named, named among NHL's 100 greatest players in 2017, but was unable to travel with Tatiana to see the Capitals win the Stanley Cup in 2018 as Ovi won the Conn Smythe as the most uh, valuable player in the playoffs. Uh, when Alex brought the – I keep putting Alex in. I don't know why. When Ovi brought the Stanley Wait, Cup – why, why is it – I don't know. It feels weird. I feel like I, – I know his name's Alex, but I don't know. He's, he's, it's like Ovi. Like, yeah, look like at me. Like, Alex. look at me. Call me Matthew. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Just my if you were calling him Alexander, would you feel better? Yeah, I guess. You would? You'd rather call him by his full name than Alex? Alexander Ovechkin. I don't know. It just rolls yeah, off the tongue. I guess so. Not Alex Ovechkin. I don't know. That's my thought. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> when Ovi brought the Stanley Cup to Russia that summer, he left it over his uh, father's head alongside his father at the training facility for Dynamo Moscow, where Ovi played as a youth and began his professional career. Alex Ovechkin called it a dream come true when he signed a one game con- one day yeah what the fuck am I trying to say one game contract with the FC Dynamo Moscow his father's old soccer team in Russia and scored a goal in a friendly manner versus the FC Amcal in Moscow on June 25th 2022 Mikhail was among those in attendance um, you brought I think you brought it up because I remember this being in the news uh, literally last. Last uh, June 25, yeah, so last last time we talked about this, and you brought the fact that his father was a professional soccer player, which mm-hmm. I didn't know until literally that. So uh, it was actually pretty cool to uh, go down memory lane with that. So uh, rest in peace to Mikhail Ovechkin here. Just uh, rough news to hear at the age of 71. So Yeah, cheers to him. Yep. Have the snip for him. A little doctor action. Mm-hmm. I thought I had this time. We uh, cracked it first. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <sighs> You're welcome. So, I'm not going to see you for a while till next week, so enjoy your uh, mini vacation there in the Cape. Thanks, buddy. I'll be at work. You work on Monday? Yeah, I got to work Monday. Oh, I, got, I, got, I got one day off. I have Sunday off, and then I got to work fucking Monday through Saturday. Even though it's a holiday? Even though it's a holiday. Wow, that stinks. Yep, so here I am, but enjoy. You know where I'll be. Going to Jimmy's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we head out, uh, again, uh, I want to thank um, Corona Premier for a sponsor on the podcast. Uh, definitely go check those out. I've been crushing one during the episode. Snap those are in the locker room last night, so I uh, I stick with the water today. But <laughs> I had my fair share of them last night, and uh, the boys all loved it. So mm-hmm. thanks again to Corona Premier for sponsoring the podcast. If you want to support us, head on over to posttopostpod.com and pick up some merch. Nice, nice. And uh, 
Want to call us out? Yeah, thanks everyone for listening. If there's anything you want to see us cover next episode, let us know. Our links are in the description, and we'll see you all next week. Bye, guys. Peace. Peace.